so cute, but you cannot see my eyes at all. <laughs> what if I just like... No, what's the point? Kind of into it though. Hello, hello, Swifties, and welcome, or welcome back, oh no. Um, <laughs> today, I wanted to do a fun little spooky time, spooky season video because I feel like there just hasn't been as much spoop about as I would prefer. So today we are going to be talking about Miss Taylor Swift's not only Halloween costumes, but costumes in general because she has been known to dress up for a few events of her own accord that were not specifically Halloween. And I do feel that they are worth talking about because one of the reasons I wanted to do this was not only spooky season, but because Taylor Swift's costume choices are not like, she's not Heidi Klum, she's not doing that, but she's doing something. <laughs> She's doing something and I think it's worth being discussed. So, without further ado, let us start at the beginning, a very good place to start, as always, and allow me, Swifties, to take you back to 2006. So in 2006 on Halloween, Miss Taylor Swift's debut album had just dropped a mere week before. And so on Halloween, naturally, we were playing an opening show for a country artist who I have never heard of, but apparently is good, named Jake Owen. He definitely looks like a man who would have two first male names. She posted on MySpace that evening, current mood, happy, happy Halloween. I'm sitting in an airport in Portland, Oregon, about to get on a red eye flight. Oh yes, I just said red eye, meaning all night, this should be interesting, dot, 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 to Toronto, Canada for another weekend of Rascal Flats shows. Tonight was awesome. It was a show in Portland at a bar called Dukes. I opened up a Jake Owen and a little backstory. I've had his album on repeat for the past couple of months. It's an amazing album and I literally cannot stop listening to it. I've got every line memorized and if you see me on a plane, chances are I'm listening to some song off that album at a volume level that's probably going to cause long-term hearing damage someday. Anyway, in all caps, I got to walk in on his sound check and meet him. Turns out he's extremely cool and had bought my album on iTunes, smiley face with the little, the little nose in the middle. And since I had to leave after one song of his set, he played my favorite song, Eight Second Ride First, which is another reason why he's awesome. And just to let everyone know, yes, I did dress up for Halloween. Yes, I stood on stage in an angel costume with huge wings that really conflicted with my guitar playing. And I convinced my two guitar players, Todd and Kevin, to put on those little headbands with the devil ears attached. Haha, ha. oh yeah, it was great. It's so awesome playing to a crowd and seeing some people who know the words to every song, all caps, exclamation point. I love that the album is out and I love that y'all are listening to it. You guys are so awesome and I really appreciate all of your comments. I love you all so much. Thanks for everything. Love, 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 T. Remember when she talked that much on social media? I'm eating like a little candy as I film this to get into like, the Halloween vibes. Join me if you would like. The amount of Taylor content that we were privy to compared to now is absolutely astounding. But yes, she opened up for Jake Owen at a bar show at the age of 16 in Portland, Oregon, wearing an angel costume. The wings were not that huge. Um, they were but 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 like a dollar store, a dollar store wing, you know, a basic costume um, of which we are all entitled to um, a handful of times in our lives. We love a basic, a go-to, a classic costume, your devil, your witch, your angel, your bumblebee, etc. But I guess when you are trying to play guitar and the guitar is going out like this way and the wings are coming this way, then I could see how it would be. I would put money on the idea that she was wearing her cowboy boots with this. This costume appears to just be one of her classic like country girl sun dresses um, which is why I'm so sure she's wearing her cowboy boots on the bottom with it but the halter strap is like this bedazzled and then she has the angel wings that she's put on with it and then her little halo here's the other thing about this costume and the next one what do you wear on like a Halloween show when you are an artist that is trying to promote their like first few albums and you're on the road you don't bring along like 
this huge elaborate costume for your like one Halloween thing that you're gonna like you're gonna have to play and perform in you like wear your cutie outfits just like just like a girl going out in college for Halloween you wear your cutie outfit and then you figure out what you can do what you can add what you can wear on your head to make it a costume and you know what that is her right and she did it and I think she was cute while doing it. You know what, even like she said, she involved her guitarists in this one. She brought them into the bit and then she flipped the script the next year. Very clever, always a mastermind. Especially in 2006, what more can we say? We love a classic Tay and we love a basic sleigh. Moving on to 2007, we took the other side of the coin and opening up for Rodney Atkins, um, another country man who is apparently of importance um, that I have never heard of, but she dressed up as a devil. I can hear the like Tay haters now when I was like looking for pictures of this costume, but there was like one little link of one person being like, Taylor Swift did dress as a devil in 2007. A really basic little devil costume. It is super hard to find pictures of, but it seems that it was just kind of a t-shirt and jeans and these sparkly devil ears. I would have loved to see her wearing this performing any of her like early like angry country woman songs. That just would have been like such a pristine early Taylor Swift moment. Again, a basic sleigh. I do think the angel one was a little bit more of a sleigh. Now in 2008 is really where we get into something interesting. And that is when her and her friend of 15 and fiddle playing fame dressed up as Chewbacca from the Star Wars movies. Um, and she did kind of like explain it. She was like, oh, we saw like all these girls dressing up um, as strutty nurses and police officers and stuff. And we just thought it was so silly. And so we thought, why don't we just be full on Chewbacca's? And you know, um, this is a very not like other girls thing to do. It was very cool to be not like other girls in 2008. And you know, the not like other girls really loved Taylor because she was really kind of trying to be that like laid back blue Jean mood ring, not like other girls kind of girl. I know she didn't write those lyrics, but you know what I mean? I was very much like trying to be like, like other girls and like not like other girls around 2008 and beyond. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just find it interesting how this played into the dynamic of the 2008-ness of it all. Keep that in mind as we move forward into, let's say, some other fuzzy counterparts of the Chewbacca costume. I want to be so clear, I'm not trying to shame Taylor Swift or call her out for trying to be like not like other girls here because we were all um doing it at that time even if that's like where this came from to be honest the reason I get that vibe is because of her comments of like low-key like strut shaming other girls costumes but that was the culture back then that is kind of what we were all taught to do that doesn't make it okay but I find it interesting that this was the costume choice she made with her friend Abigail in 2008 and then that was the explanation she gave for it there's just a very 2008 not like other girls choice um to make during the time when there wasn't really like an ironic making fun of being not like other girls we were like very very serious about it and now as we continue on we do continue to see some similar costumes. However, I'm not sure that this is the place that those are coming from. I think the ones in the future are coming from a less toxic and a more strategic place, but I find it interesting how that things that. progress with the years and how the costumes match the times. That is the point I was trying to make. I am a fan. I am a stan. I was a fan and a stan then. I am a fan and a stan now. Do not get it twisted. I am here for women's rights and women's wrongs, especially this woman. Actually, before we move on from Chewbacca, lest we forget that Taylor Swift is a nerd. She has the nerd bone in her body. She has the popular girl gene, but she has the nerd gene as well. In 2009, she popped up with her band at a Keith Urban show, who she'd been opening for at the time. Her and her band members showed up during a song called Kiss as band members members of the band Kiss. The only other image we have of like Rocker Taylor is this one. And if you can tell me the context of this photo, I will love you forever. Yeah, this was kind of like fun and cute and I don't feel like people talk about it all that much, but they showed up and they like did the song and he like realized it was her and like laughed and it was like a fun early 2000s, like wholesome, 
music country moment. Fearless had been released. It had not yet won its Grammy for album of the year, but it was doing really well. It was well loved. She was on the rise and this was good vibes and really fed into the idea of Taylor being someone who was fun to be around, who was cool, casual, and just like one of your friends or the girl next door, which was very much kind of her persona and the image that she was building from debut in the country world and having such success with because there were not many of those girlies to be found. It was your best friend. She was a good time to hang out with. You wanted to be the one she was like planning a joke like this with or on. Now for the first year since the debut release in 2010, we do not get a costume for Miss Taylor because she is busy promoting the release of Speak Now. The closest Halloween we see her is on October 29th. She performs a top giant bus on Hollywood and Highland and just this red top and jeans looking very cute, um, but like not leaning in to the spooky vibes of it. However, she was doing performances of Haunted and kind of really leaning into the darker, kind of edgier vibe of that album. So that was kind of like an element of the release. And then the following year in 2011, we were fully in the throes of the Speak Now tour and the 31st of October was on a break between shows in Memphis on the 30th and Houston on the 5th of November. So we move on to 2012 where we were in the red era, baby. Oh my goodness. When I looked into 2012, there was no Halloween costume, but she did perform on Dancing with the Stars on October 30th in this outfit. And I feel like we forget how much Taylor really led the charge with like the vintage twee new girl walking patent Mary Jane colored pants polka dots bow tie glasses moment um that we were having you know with the red album she really showed up to perform on Dancing with the Stars in this outfit and she did it in full confidence and we loved it at the time um and like I'm not saying I don't love it now it's just one of those things like the wedding dress your mom wore in the 80s that like it's beautiful, but it is so of the time that you cannot mentally separate it from that time. So I love that this is the closest to Halloween outfit that we have for 2012, because I feel like it really is kind of a costume of 2012. In 2013, we were in the red era still because we were on the red tour and the 31st was once again a break between shows on the red tour, which again had many, many, many magnificent looks. Definitely some serves that served us for at least a year and a half of Halloween looks because really truly I feel like the red era in and of itself gave such a strong aesthetic not to mention the like Hamptons moment of it all that we got during it that really like enough looks were given and enough aesthetics were built up to where fashion wise and look wise we had enough to talk about to skip to Halloween's reasonably but in 2014 we were back baby because we were in 1989 promo mode and we were going to radio show after radio show remember when radio shows were like of importance and they were like like clips from interviews of like celebrities talking on radio shows. Are there still, do they still do that? I know that people still go like Apple Music and like Sirius XM. Do people still, is that still of importance? Let me know if you know. But we were running around in our Pegacorn costume. We specified it was a Pegacorn because a Pegasus is the one with the wings and the unicorn is the one with the horn. We were rocking both along with our hooves. And here we jump into the fuzzy, cute, sexy costume kind of phenomenon. Now, do I think that this Pegacorn costume was custom? Probably not. Um, do I think that it was selected by her? Probably. Maybe not the costume itself, but I think that she was the one that decided this is what she wanted to do. And I think at the time, really being in like full must maximize our positive public image mode, she had to do something that she simply could not be shamed for. And so she had to be a good role model. She couldn't do anything that would get her labeled as a strut. She couldn't do anything that would could get her labeled as problematic or unfeminist. And so what did she lean into? Something so stupidly, annoyingly popular that it really could not be discussed 
unicorns. I feel like 2014 was really like the peak of the like cost benefit on the unicorn economic curve. I really feel like after 2014, we started getting products like unicorn snot um, come onto the market and like the cute funness of the unicorn obsession really started to deteriorate from like the unicorn highlighters and like the products that like may have been useless, but at least they were fun. Um, and we started to get into like the just useless and creating more plastic category but 2014 Taylor hit the nail on the head and she stepped out in her unicorn onesie again I really feel like 2014 was peak onesie as well this was more than a onesie to be clear it was really a full costume and did fit her better than a onesie it looks more comfortable than a onesie a little bit less suffocating than just a basic pajama onesie it went really well with her sleek short 1989 haircut at the time and I think that it PR widely walked the line perfectly for her because you cannot be shamed for being snuggly and silly and that my friends is the philosophy we're going to continue with for Taylor Swift costumes to come. I think the fuzzy costumes started with being not like other girls but slowly as they go on we're gonna have a few more in quick succession here. I think the silly fuzzy costumes purpose are really several fold. It might be a uh, I don't need to you know dress up in a glitzy strutty costume and show out for Halloween type thing. It may have been that with the Chewbacca a little bit. There may have been that original toxicity inherently in the back of her mind and maybe there still is who knows but I'd like to give her the benefit of the doubt and think as a famous person when you are making a choice of a Halloween costume people are going to talk about it you have to think about what they're going to say and the safest thing is to not really allow them much bad things to say lest they look like an asshole for doing it you want to criticize the girl in the pegacorn costume that it's silly yeah and she's not trying to say that it's not. She's having a good time without people's inability to handle women wearing clothing getting in the way. And Taylor has frequently chosen to go silly and snuggly. And I think that that PR wise has worked for her very well. Following up the next year, she continued very safely in her 1989 era with another one of the most popular, well-liked things at the time, Frozen. It's really crazy because like you can track with these costumes, you know, Taylor Swift was very much like I said in her pop star maximizing positive public perception mode during her 1989 era. And what did she choose to dress up as? The most sickeningly unproblematic, absolutely unarguably popular things possible. A unicorn and Olaf from Frozen. She did do this at the Halloween show on her 1989 tour. She performed with Idina Menzel, who dressed up as Elsa and sang Frozen. That was really good. It was really fun. Did I hate this costume? Yes, I did. Um, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It was my least favorite costume of the entire bunch. I support all of the other fuzzy costumes. I do not support this one. I did not like this one and I don't really want to talk about it that much more, so we're gonna move on. And I get there were probably a lot of people there, and you had to play to like what was gonna please the most people, and so Frozen was, I, I get it, I get it. It was very 1989 of her. I just, I don't know, I look at, I look at it and I go, this is your queen. <laughs> And it hurts a little. <laughs> so October 2016 was post Snake Gate in September and post Taylor Swift's over party in the summer of 2016. And so you would think, dear watchers, that we might not be posting for Halloween, but we stepped up and we stepped out. Apropos, this wasn't for Halloween. This wasn't a bash um, that she was throwing. This wasn't a party. Um, she certainly couldn't be doing that. But she spent the holiday with Gigi Hadid, Martha Hunt, Camila Cabello, and Lily Donaldson in New York City to celebrate the birthday of their friend Kennedy Ray. Do I know who that is? No, I do not. Did I look it up? No, I did not. Camila Cabello, notably present though, and notably not present anymore. But she was Deadpool and her, one of her longtime besties, Blake Lively, being married to Ryan Reynolds, it was implied that this was was an actual Deadpool suit from the movies um, and that is 
you know, pretty cool, of course. But also, she looks so hot. This is the first time I feel like we saw her decide to look hot for Halloween. And it was still kind of in this like cool, different, like sideways way. But like, I love it. Um, and I loved it then and I'm living for it now. I don't know, like edgy rocker tomboy taylor i just am really kind of here for and she had the short hair and so i don't know she just looked like a superhero who had just taken her mask off and she was like ready for business with this just kind of like sultry look foreshadowing of the reputation era question mark no um but these pictures are amazing i love them um i love that we had this halloween as swifties and deadpool being kind of like an anti-hero i think is kind of perfect like going out of the taylor swift is over party snake gate and like into the reputation era for that to be her halloween costume like deadpool the like kind of cheeky anti-hero but also like the grown-up superhero i don't know is a very like kind of like a stepping into adulthood for her and i feel like that's very much what like 1989 reputation was because like 1989 she was very much like a grown-up pop girly she had songs like wildest dreams and style but like she was like most certainly not trying to cater to the children any more with reputation um she was not going to be dressing up as olaf on the reputation tour so i just kind of like i feel like this like slots into place so perfectly after the pegacorn after the olaf to have society just beat her down so viciously after she was trying so hard and succeeding so hard at pleasing them for her to then dress up as superhero going into her reputation era is just mwah. do i think this was on purpose maybe a little bit but also like when you have the resources we can't deny that deadpool is also something that was very popular at the time it may have just been that 2017 there would be no explanation there would only be reputation and then in 2018 while we did not get a halloween costume we were blessed with our very first new year's eve party costume going in to 2019 she threw a new year's eve costume party at her rhode island house just as she had been known to do in the eras of yore for the fourth of july and she asked all of her guests to dress up as their childhood hero many of her friends from the past were in attendance dressing up as notable figures from their childhood while miss taylor dressed up as ariel which is like so very fitting but daddy i love him i don't know that's such a fitting hero for Taylor and who she became. You know, Ariel was a girl who had a love and a fixation and an obsession and she was ready to throw her entire life into risk um, for the magic and the dream of that working out and having that love. And not only that, her voice was like her thing. She sang and it was taken from her. And so she had to work to do things without her voice because it was her greatest asset. And he heard her voice and he recognized her for it. That totally makes sense for her. But not only that, we love a redhead Taylor. She's come up over and over and over again in different iterations, in different moments. And every time we see her, we love to see her because she really does um, slay. I actually would have to say I prefer red hair Taylor to brown hair Taylor. I know there are some brown hair Taylor stands out there. I would have to say I am a blonde hair Taylor purist. Um, my favorite Taylor hair is how it is right now. Her natural kind of like dark dirty blonde situation she has going on. That is mwah, my favorite Taylor hair. But if I had to pick like an unnatural Taylor hair color, I'm going red all of the way. This costume I have to assume was custom. I really love the way she did the mermaid thing while still having it be like an actual dress that she could like seemingly walk around in and moved in it looked so cute on her she purposefully wore this little crab bag and you can tell she's so totally posing in this picture with the pizza she's like someone's taking a picture of me i'm gonna bite the pizza and i'm gonna like, show you my little crab bag like, and there are so many cute pictures um of this party of like her and all of her friends in their costumes on the stairs her and ryan, ryan reynolds drinking from a bottle at the table i'm dying to know from whence this costume and wig came like how did we get it how far in advance was this planned who made it i need to know because like it looks like it fits her it looks like it fits her better than some things that she's worn on red carpets and so like I there's so little information about this aerial costume and I'm asking for information about this aerial costume because it's like it's like just nice enough like it's not so nice that it absolutely like would have to be custom but like 
I'm not sure where you would find this online. I don't know, maybe you could, because it's a cute dress, it's a really cute dress. And I feel like if you could find it online, you'd just see people wearing it everywhere. I have to say of all the Taylor Swift costumes, this is my favorite. I did research and it does seem that you can buy costumes similar to this online, but not this exact one. I cannot find this exact one. Um, namely the quality of the like bra piece. In 2019, in October, we were on the record reputation tour in Australia. I hope she had an absolutely wonderful Australian Halloween. In 2020, of course, there was no real like Halloween celebration to be had. We were like far too close to like the election day for it to be like cutesy and fun necessarily from like a celebrity point of view. It like probably wouldn't have come across like I don't know, like super well, I feel like. But we did get this post on New Year's Eve in lieu of a costume party, I suppose, um, which I guess she clearly was very into movies um, during the pandemic. Do we know if the pandemic is when she got the directing bug? We're not sure. Do we know if she kind of like got it from talking to Joe the film boy during the reputation era and it grew from there and just like really had a growth during the panoramic? Maybe, because I love an A24 film. I really do. Do I want her to be a director? I'm not entirely sure. We're going down an entirely different path here though. This was an interesting costume. Um, we're really continuing on the cozy path, the like slightly silly, snuggly, but still making a statement path. But while this is contributing to that, what I really see this as is like the beginning seeds of the like Taylor creeping into the film world. Um, not to mention being relatable in the way that like we all spent New Year's Eve 2020 in some sort of pajama-esque situation. She still like kind of can't help but be relatable. But in 2021, we were back out on these streets, baby, and we were snuggly as ever in a definitely not custom, absolutely ordered squirrel costume. Um, you know, we were, and we were as silly as we were with the pegacorn, but in a less pushing it way, you know? No, there is no trend about a squirrel. The trend is though, that it is also a mask because of the way it covers her face like that. And so it is also a strategy building on top of the strategy that already was the fuzzy costumes. We just really were feeling our rig, um vibe of our costumes and we wanted to continue with that and like it or not here we were and we were a squirrel we were out trick-or-treating in LA I'm sure it was keeping us very snuggly and toasty and you know of the snuggly costumes this one is definitely my favorite I found the humor in this to just not be trying too hard I felt like it was fun in a genuine way it didn't feel too not like the other girls it felt just right Right. Um, it felt like she was here and if you liked her swirl costume that was great and if you didn't that was okay as well and I enjoyed it. I think the pictures are fun. Let me know if you like this more than the Olaf costume. And that was actually our final Taylor Swift costume because in 2022 we had the Midnight's release on the 21st so we were definitely not like looking for a costume. Um, we were more looking for like a tour announcement so we were being well fed and then in 2023 we were on an Eras tour break between international dates so as of right now Halloween has not happened yet. Do I think we'll be getting a costume? No. Um, we've gotten many 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 new costumes however on the recent dates of the tour. So once again, we are being very well fed and I cannot wait for what is to come. Let me know what your favorite Taylor Swift look and costume has been, what you think about her cozy choices. Please, once again, um, remember I'm a fan. I love her. I support women's rights, women's wrongs. I am flawed and these are just my stupid little thoughts. Thank you so, so very much for watching. I appreciate it with my entire heart. If you did enjoy it, feel free to leave a like. It, let me, it lets me know you liked it and it makes my heart soar. Subscribe if you would like to see more Swifty pop culture videos. I have a Lana one coming out soon. I'm very, very excited for, and I cannot wait to see you so soon in the next one.